to address the issues facing Tennesseans today. From 10 News, this is Inside Tennessee. Good morning and welcome to Inside Tennessee. I'm your moderator, John Becker. We kick off two straight weeks of conversations with a half dozen people vying to become the next mayor of the city of Knoxville. For the first time in eight years, Knoxville voters will elect a new mayor. Mayor Madeline Rojero has served two terms. Six candidates are running in the August primary, unless one of them grabs more than 50% of the vote. The top two candidates in the vote count move on to the regular election, as it's called, in November. We're going to hear from those candidates again this morning. We've heard one-on-one -on -one from each of them in a series of interviews that are online right now. This morning, three of their names were drawn out of a hat, and those three candidates join us. You can find that dramatic drawing on my Twitter page. John North, thank you very much for allowing us to use your hat. All right, let's start on the end there is Eddie Manis, also with us, Calvin Taylor Skinner and Marshall Steele. Good to have you all here. Good to be, good to be here, John. Thank you. I'm going to introduce our panel, and we'll get to questions on the end. There is Dennis Francis. He's a lawyer and also a Democrat. Good morning. Good morning. Susan Richardson-Williams runs her own PR firm. She is a Republican. Good morning, John. And my colleague John North is also with us this morning. Good morning, John. Let's start with you, Mr. Stair, about why you are running to be Knoxville mayor. Great, great. Thank you for having us on here this morning. Yeah, I was born and raised in Knoxville, uh, lived different places, moved back here, always wanted uh, to live in Knoxville, ran for city council, have enjoyed that time. And more importantly, I'm really proud of what we've accomplished. And my campaign is about building on that momentum, addressing our challenges, some of the things we've talked about, affordable housing, homelessness, but then also make sure we stick to the basics, the quality services people count on, you know, fixing potholes, making sure, uh, you know, making sure every neighborhood is safe. And, you know, I feel like the city's got a lot of momentum. We've had a lot of success. And I'm running to make sure that success is felt by every person in Knoxville, no matter what zip code they live in. Mr. Skinner, your reason for running? Yeah, absolutely. Um, Calvin Taylor Skinner, <clears throat> just share that uh, as my background uh, is in uh, faith and also community organizing, uh, I went on to Washington, D.C. and Philadelphia working around community development and faith and policy and uh, just recognizing the issues that are going on nationally. Uh, it's a mess. And if anything is going to change, it's going to have to happen at the local level. And why, I, why am I running? It's time. It's time for fuller representation to uh, be at the table. It's time uh, for the fuller story of Knoxville uh, to be shared. When I think about the elderly woman who uh, came to me crying because she doesn't know if she's going to get this place. Uh, when I think about uh, others who are just in, in desperate uh, need because they don't have job opportunities, it's time. It's time that we come up with solutions. It's time that we even come up with unconventional approaches because we need far-reaching progress in a city that has not happened in a long time. We'll dig into some specifics there in a moment. First, Eddie Manis, your reason for running. Yes, uh, you know, being a native of Knoxville, you know, I grew up in North Knoxville and, and attended Inskip Elementary School and Gresham Junior High School and then Central High School. And then, uh, just kind of worked several jobs uh, here in Knoxville and then started my own company in 1985. And I've uh, been doing that for 34 years here in Knoxville and have tried very hard to give back to the community during that time. I considered running uh, for mayor in 2010 and chose not to and then served as uh, deputy to the mayor and chief operating officer for the city of Knoxville from 2011 until 2013. And I've always had a burning desire and a passion to make Knoxville the best city that it can be. Knoxville has so much potential and Knoxville is a great city, but let's take the, let's take the great city and make it even greater. And so I had that passion in 2010 and thought, we'll see how that passion goes. And in 2019, we'll see if it still exists. The passion is greater today than it was then to do everything I can to make Knoxville the best city it can be. Let's stick with you, Eddie, and talk about the, the biggest challenge facing the city at this very moment. I think, you know, like I said, Knoxville is a great city, but there are several challenges. And I think the thing that, that my administration will focus on first out of the gate is uh, making Knoxville a more economically vibrant city. Economic development is, is one of the keys, I think, to our future and really uh, attracting new jobs. And not only just when I say that, not only from the outside, uh, from other areas moving into the city of Knoxville, but also really encouraging and supporting the entrepreneurs that we have here. Being an entrepreneur myself, I understand that. And really demonstrating that Knoxville is a 
good city to do business with, to do business in. And I don't think we've done the best job at that, and I think there's a lot of opportunity for that. But economic development and creating more and better jobs is, will be my focus. Mr. Skinner, your thoughts on the biggest challenge facing the city? We'll dive into the other specifics you mentioned, but how about that question? Yeah, uh, inclusive economics. Uh, when we think about the poverty level and the neighborhoods that are impacted most, uh, for a long time, uh, the numbers are staggering when we think about the poverty levels uh, of all of Knoxville, but especially in uh, specific areas that have been uh, neglected. Uh, therefore, uh, coming uh, again, coming up with solutions and, and even embracing uh, the resources, the community partners who are already doing the work uh, around addressing homeless, uh, homelessness and uh, other nonprofits and faith institutions, ensuring that we're bringing those people to the table and tapping into what they know uh, are the solutions to address these issues that, again, have been happening for a long time. Marshall Steer, the biggest challenge facing the city right now? I think it's homelessness and public safety. You know, homelessness is, is really, the problem has really grown sort of outside the downtown area. You know, we're seeing it uh, from Fountain City to South South Knoxville, and uh, you know, we've got to do better. And uh, this would be a top prior priority for me. Uh, I think we need to do more to keep people in their homes, and that's, a, you know, more affordable housing, uh, rental assistance programs keeping, you know, we're seeing more women and families homeless, keeping their, them in their homes, and then also being aggressive, getting out uh, to these individuals, getting them the help they need, get them on a path to stability, and then also working with the state uh, to make sure uh, to, to get their resources. You know, some of these individuals are going to need intensive care for a long time, so we need those state resources to help, uh, to help do that. Uh, and public safety, you know, this is the number one job of the city. You know, the police department and the fire department are our biggest budgets. This is, these are the services that the residents pay for. And right now we're short on police officers and it would be a top priority for me to get up to full strength to make sure uh, we can make sure every neighborhood is safe. And then the other thing is the new police facility. That's obviously a big project. It's not going to be finished uh, in this term. And so I would work to make sure that that's state of the art and under budget. All right. We're going to bring in our panel with the next series of questions right after this short break on Inside Tennessee.